Hi guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with a much anticipated video for you. This is finally the undervolting guide. Now I have had to jump through many hoops with this because I did through the process of going through the undervolting guide, uh, pick up a few things that needed some tweaking on the vendor's side and then that has delayed things. Uh, but we are now at the point where everyone's happy for me to go live with it. So I am sorry it's taken so long, but it's going to be fairly comprehensive. So what is going to happen today is I have three rigs because I have one from MSI, one from Gigabyte, and then another one from Asus. The uh, Gigabyte and the MSI have 14900Ks in, the Asus one has a 14700K in. Now the different processes don't make any difference, so please don't get dismayed if you're an Asus owner with a 14900K, the process is still the same. Now my uh, approach to this is going to be a bit like the old saying, I'm going to teach you how to fish, I'm not going to give you a fish. The reason why I'm going to teach you how to do yours at home rather than just hand out settings is you've all got different systems at home and there is a thing called the silicon lottery, meaning that all of your processes have the ability to have quite a range of different, uh, they're, they're gonna want different amounts of volts. The boards may want different amounts of load line calibration. Just difference in the ACES boards across the ranges can mean they might need slightly more load line calibration. <clears throat> so it's easier for me to make sure that you get the best results that you can do at home. It's easier for me to just teach you how to look for things, what you're going to want at the end of it, and uh, we will just work through it all together. So I'm gonna teach you how to set up the load line calibration, and this is a good point for me to say, my way. Now, if Roman, uh, AKA DeBauer, or uh, Tech Jesus, Steve, tell you that their way is different and you want to follow their way that's absolutely fine I'm not here to upset the apple cart I'm just going to teach you my way and how I have managed to and this is critical drop temperatures but increase performance and that is the biggest thing that is going to come out of this if you follow it right the way through your temps are coming down your performance is going up with all of these. Now the Asus one with the i7 is the difficult one because it's an air cooler. But even with the 360 millimeter AIOs on the 14900K, they all throttled, they all hit 100 degrees. And what we did at the end of it was brought the temps down by at least 10 degrees, but put the performance up. Um, so it's basically, the way I think Intel should have done it at the start because 1.4 plus volts on a 14900K is just too much and all of the brands did go with the normal Intel voltage tables but that in turn then meant when you went on to Cinebench 24 they all hit 100 degrees and then the clock speeds uh, drop accordingly with ours or with my way of showing you this, you are going to get uh, on the 14900Ks 5.7 all core at lower temps than you would at stock. Now, uh, all of these were meant to be 5.7 all core, but we had some of them going down to 5.4 and even 5.2 at times uh, with 100 degrees. And the only times that the temperatures really come below 100 degrees was when they were basically down clocking themselves. So you are going to, it is going to be a lesson, is going to be a reference tool. You are probably going to have to keep coming back. You're probably going to want it on your phone or download the video and have it somewhere on a TV maybe that you can watch it and follow through the things. You are going to have to pay attention uh, and you are going to need to download Cinebench 24. You're going to need to download Cinebench 23. You're going to need to download uh, maybe OCCT, but that's up to you. Uh, but the main one that we are also going to be keeping an eye on is a uh, hardware monitor or hardware mon. Um, all of those programs are free. That is also critical. This is not going to cost you anything but time. Uh, but once you've got used to this, you should be able to knock out an undervolt 
in under an hour. You're going to spend longer with benchmarks running than you are actually going into the BIOS, playing around with things. And the BIOS, I will show you all three because they all put things in different places. And that's the reason why I've done so many of them to try and help you all at home. Because normally I would have just done it on the Asus BIOS and then I've got people underneath going, well, my, my MSI is different. Uh, also, the way that they do the load line calibration, all different. So I'm going to make sure that I tell you all of them. That's one of the reasons why it's taken so long. The only one out of all of these that might spur off into its own video is going to be this one. Because not only did we undervolt it, but because of the cooler, we then downclocked it, but the performance still went up. Uh, so this is more of one of those ones for you, you guys out there with an i5 or an i7 and not uh, an incredible cooler, but I can still show you by restricting the cooler, I can still show you that I can bring the uh, clock speeds down a little bit and tune it to that cooler and we still get better performance. Um, again, we, uh, we have a lot to cover. There's many systems. We'll start with a look around the systems so that you can get a feel for the hardware that's in them, what I've done, and the fact that I've tried to make it quite varied so that we can cover many bases. Uh, and the critical thing that I'm gonna say is keep an eye on the timestamps because you're gonna have a timestamp there for Asus BIOS, MSI BIOS, uh, Gigabyte BIOS. Then you're also gonna get um, a timestamp for this is the process that you need to follow. This is what you need to watch. And then at the end, I'll show you what the performance was, what the performance now is, and that there's many smiles. And we finally have an Intel processor that we've not ripped the top off that we can live with. Okie dokie, so first up, the MSI. Uh, it's in the uh, Maestro case, which has a single piece uh, bit of glass. It was actually my case of choice from uh, CES because I loved it so much. Um, they're only making 500, maybe a thousand. We don't know which one it's gonna be yet. But anyway, inside it was actually my graphics card that I most wanted from CES as well, which is the uh, Expert. Now this is the 4080 Super, but they are going to do other models. Other parts in it, Z790 Ace. Good overclocking board high-end board, but we have their uh, Core Liquid E360 AIO in here. Bit of a weird one, this, because it's not necessarily a high-end uh, liquid cooler, despite the fact it is a 360. One of the things I have done is I have got Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4 in throughout, including on the AIO. Um, so I have to say that I needed the fans on the AIO to be able to make it uh, cope with the 14900K, but also livable as well. They are just better fans. I'm going to leave that there in that they are just better fans, but also this now all matches. It looks nice. It's got that kind of stealth um, air to it. Uh, you will see a review for the expert on the OC3D website, but we've also got their uh, Meg. 1300 watts, so it's the AI 1300p power supply. Now, it's 160 mil, so it's normal ATX. It's got uh, 12 VH PWR. It is uh, PCI Express 5 ready, ATX 3 ready. It was actually the first one on the market that was, but it's a very nice, compact, powerful uh, power supply. But most importantly, throughout this is it kind of fits in with a uh, keeping the branding simple and MSI do make nice power supplies. One of the things I really like about this is it does have a USB connector that you can plug into the uh, board itself so you can monitor what the power supply is doing and change settings from within the OS. But this for me is how I would build it. And that's how I've gone about all of these is I've just built a um, mixed system uh, that I would happily use. So 14900K, um, 32 gig of 6,000 megahertz memory, which will have run an XMP, tasty motherboard, tasty graphics card, beautiful case, but this one's just not got loads of RGB or flashiness about it. And it is quite understated.
Okay then, on to the Aura system, all based around a Z970 Aorus Pro X, 14900K in here. All housed in the new Corsair 6500D, which is the airflow model, but you can get a version of this with glass, and it's actually really pretty. I was gutted I didn't get one for launch. Anyway, uh, I've, as I've said, I've built these how I would. So I've built this to make me happy. So at the end of the day, we've got the Aorus board in there, and then there's a, a 14, uh, sorry, 14, there's a 4070 Ti Super, and it's the Aero model. Is there a white one? It's actually quite compact, but anyway, cooling, most important thing for what we're gonna be talking about today. It's the new H150 with Link. So it's a 360 millimeter radiator, Corsair fans, and they all kind of daisy chain together. And they literally like, the fans are all linked with the fans. And then there's a cable at the end, which links down to the next lot. It's actually all very pretty. Dominator Platinum memory, a uh, plethora of Corsair fans. And then round the back, while I catch it, because I didn't clip it down because I knew I'd be taking it off, we have the uh, shift power supply, which is a 1200 watt model as well. Um, as I have said though, it is all held together with the Corsair Link system, um, and it does actually work pretty well. Uh, obviously, I've caught power supply cable on the way round, so we'll just leave that there for today, but that is our Aorus setup. Now, with the Acer setup, critically, we're using the Hyper 622 Halo in white from Cooler Master. This puts us at a limitation of cooling ability in reality, and I wouldn't suggest trying to run an i9 on that cooler or any air coolers, really, because it's just gonna make your life a little bit hell. It was hard enough to get the i7 working, but the critical thing that I do need to say about this, peeps, is the process that we go through with the Asus Stroke Air Cooler will work on all the other boards as well. I just couldn't do a, a water cooler and an air cooler with all different processes. The video would have been like five hours long or we would have had to have made 12 of them. But anyway, uh, Rogstrick Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi 2 is the board. It's actually in the Cooler Master Cube, but I've just powder coated the uh, top and the front in candy red. I've also powder coated the top of the air coolers. Again, I built this like I was doing it for me. It is a white 108, sorry, 850 watt power supply from Cooler Master up in the front. I'd very much like to have put the little ITX one in the front that they do that's 850 watt and it would have saved me more room. But we have two fans in the bottom bringing in, one in the top and then one in the back with the uh, air cooler running there. It is a white jewel. It's a 4060 jewel in white, so it's quite a compact little rig. And the critical point in this is underneath it is the 14700K, not the 900K. I could not get the, nine, the i9 to play nice with this cooler. It was very hard to get the i7 to play nice with this cooler included me having to downclock it, but we still increased performance. And that's a very critical point. And I hope you can see that I've tried to do very different systems so that this kind of helps as many people as possible. So I am going to walk you through this all in stages and we'll break it up so that you will get uh, the three different BIOS stages broken up as well. But first and foremost, what we do have to do is do some basic testing because we need to know what the voltages are we need to know uh, how much they're moving around and what we need to do but first of all what you need to do is go into the BIOS we're going to make some basic setting changes mainly so that the menu goes back to the same place but critically uh, so that we enable XMP now XMP is basically turning your memory to run at rated so let's head off and get that done Okay, so initial setup. Um, you've obviously got into BIOS. If you haven't, then you just hit delete um, as your system starts to post and get into this. And it will show you this area first. When you get here, press F7. It will flick into the expert mode. Don't worry about it. It's easier for me to show you around with this stuff in here. Now we need to do uh, one thing first, and that is 
uh, turn OC Explore mode to expert. That's just to help us later on. And then what we need to do is just go down and enable XMP, but they call it iExpo in here. And basically by doing this, you can see just in gray, just underneath there, it's now uh, enabling the memory to run at the rated speed that you purchased. If you don't do this first, your CPU or rather your memory will be running at like 4800 megahertz if it's DDR5. Um, so if you haven't enabled this, it's not actually going to be running at the power, the speed that you paid for. Um, it's, very, it's a very simple setting. It's something that a lot of people forget, but you need to do this. Once you have done this, we hit F10, we go into uh, Windows and we're going to go and run our first batch of benchmarks. OK, so Gigabyte. Uh, to start off with, you're going to need to use your mouse and we need to go up and put it into advanced mode. Then what we need to do is go along to save and exit. Actually, no, we don't. We need to go to boot and uh, it would normally be at the top like that. But if you click up, it comes down to the preferred operating mode and we want to put it on advanced mode because that's going to bring us back to uh, this menu. So it's just easier for us later on. Now, over to tweaker. Something we'll look at later on is perf drive. But what we do need to go down and do is turn on the extreme memory profile. Uh, again, this is uh, just to enable XMP. I've got some faster memory in this, but if I was going to set this up when we did the testing earlier on, it was uh, 6,000 megahertz that I had in here. Um, the white stuff that you saw, the Dominator uh, titanium, it's just very posh. Um, but I, I've done the basics of the testing with 6,000. It was actually uh, a different... Uh, kit from uh, Gigabyte that we use. But anyway, you need to do this. Um, the reason why you need to do this is without this turned on, your memory will not be running at rated. Now, at this point, what we need to do is hit F10, go into uh, Windows and run another set of tests, as I've explained to you already. OK, so the Asus BIOS, this is how it will look when you first go into it. What we're going to do is hit F7, takes us into the advanced mode. We straight away are going to go across to boot, down to boot configuration, and then we're going to scroll down to setup mode because this is something we want to keep it in advanced mode. This means we don't have to press F7 every time we uh, post in. Now, the other thing that we need to do because it is our basic mode, we obviously need to turn on XMP as well. So we're going to go in here and you'll see at the side at the moment, it says DRAM frequency 4800 by hitting that. Um, it, uh, you can see 6000 is now highlighted for XMP. When we save it, the bit of the side will change and you'll see it says 6000 instead. But we do need to save the settings first and foremost. But now it's time, get into Windows, have a look. So once you've done the basics, we are back here. Now we are going to be using Cinebench 23, Cinebench 24 and then hardware monitor. You're going to see it's kind of going to look like this a lot. I'm also going to highlight for you uh, the voltage that you're going to need to keep an eye on because it's in a different place for each of the boards um, just so that you know where we're looking and what we need to be working with. Now we are going to run the benchmark for all of them even though that we know they're going to be getting hot. This is technically how you've been running it already. Uh, so what you need to do is take a screenshot like I have for each of your benchmarks and uh, you also need to write down on a pen and a piece of paper as well because it is going to help you to be able to have the two uh, really easily to hand. Now uh, the, you are going to need to keep an eye on the temperatures, you are going to need to keep an eye on the voltages and you're also going to need to keep an eye on the clock speeds as well because the clock speeds you'll see when things hit 100 degrees, the clock speeds are going to drop. Uh, and that's something we don't want to happen. So with the systems with the 14900K in, we want them to be sat at 5.7, so 5700, 5700. When we're running it in um, Cinebench multi-core mode, we want them all to be running at 5700. That is our goal. It's our goal with good temperatures and good volts as well but that's where we want to be with the uh 
i7 it would be 55 but i couldn't get that running with that cooler which we'll cover later but the thing is i'm not covering every processor here so it's going to depend on your processor at home you need to know what the maximum all core clock is and for a 14900k it's 5700 megahertz for a 14700k it's 5500 megahertz you just need to find out what yours is and that is what your goal is going to be anyway at this point um, we've seen where our voltages are and everything like that we now need to get load line calibration working how we want it uh, and now we've got our data we know what our um, voltages have been it's probably going to be quite high it's now time to head into the BIOS again to change the load line calibration now second stage this one's uh, much easier because we're just going to set some basic uh, settings up based on what you have seen with your processor you need to go into digit all here load line calibration I have been finding two has worked really well for me for the way I want it to be obviously want my volts to be very stable and controlled but you can use it as you wish my um, advice it's going to be mode one mode two or mode three depending on how good your board is and how the VRMs can cope then the only other setting that we are going to need to change is the CPU CPU core voltage voltage mode then we want to go into a complete overvolt mode sorry a complete override mode and then based on what you found with your settings that you've been looking at with hardware monitor you need to decide what you're putting in here now don't forget what I said you uh, we start off with how it was working on your board with a little bit of an undervolt just so that we can make sure that the load line calibration is working correctly we will be back here later to continue undervolting we just need to get it all set up right know that the load line calibration is running correctly and then we will continue undervolting later okay so gigabyte load line calibration uh, theirs is annoyingly uh, hidden they should make it simpler but what we have to do is we have to come right down to the bottom here um, to advanced voltage settings then we need to go to CPU VRM settings there and then you can see CPU V core load line calibration now gigabyte have a million different settings oh they've actually reduced it anyway um, it used they honestly they used to have like 12 of the flipping things so uh, if you have a look at ultra extreme it says it goes straight on that line I with some of the other versions so your different boards genuinely you might have 12 options in there it is going to be um, one of the bottom three now what we want is the voltage to obviously stay as close to the value that we manually set as possible so you need to uh, keep an eye on that and this may need to be changed if you put 1.45 in at stock and you're seeing 1.7 you need to turn the load line calibration down a bit if you're seeing 1.3 sorry 1.43 then you need to turn the load line calibration up a little bit so we're going to set this to ultra extreme I'm pretty sure when I ended up I ended up with it on one below but we'll set it to that and then we come back out again and then what we need to do is go up to see v core voltage mode in here we want fixed v core and then cpu v core underneath this is where you input your setting that you need to do based on what you've seen some of you might be seeing 1.45 some some of you might be seeing 1.42 some of you may be seeing less but you need to do this first and foremost just so that we can make sure that the load line calibration is working as we would expect and then if not you're back into the BIOS to be able to fine tune your choices okay so ASUS load line calibration we have to scroll down quite far in the ASUS menus but once you get used to it it's actually kind of nice and it gets familiar or it certainly does with me anyway CPU load line calibration here you can see we've got level 3 grade in there anyway um, and it also says in here that level four is recommended for overclock I'm going to be just brutally honest with you though you're going to want seven or eight uh, seven sometimes isn't enough and you need to go to eight but also at the, in the same breath eight sometimes pushes our voltage 
above the level that we input manually. So I'd start with seven, but see how you go. Uh, with voltages, we come down that little bit further down here, and what you can see is actual VRM core voltage. Now, when uh, we do this, we go in and we put manual mode and the voltages go in there. Don't forget, you set the manual voltage first. We make sure load line calibration is working correctly. And then this is where we come in and then we'll start to manually turn the voltages downwards as well. But this is our main area of focus in the Asus BIOS. I know we've got a lot of cuts for different BIOS, but we have to, to try and help everyone. But now we're at the point, LLC is where we want it, and we're turning the volts down. Okay, so critical point with the voltages, as the volts come down, the temps are gonna come down as well, but we need to keep an eye on the clock speeds because you can turn your voltages down too much. And if you turn your voltages down too much, the clock speeds might start to uh, flicker around again. It's gonna look like they're hot, but they're not. They're just not getting enough power. Um, also, when you're running your benchmarks, if the clock speeds are all staying at 5.7, but your benchmarks, let's say they've gone up nicely and we're seeing a boost, if they start to come back down again, then your uh, voltage has gone a little bit too far. You can still have a stable system, but the processor might not quite have enough power in it. So it is very much a balancing act. And this is why I can't really just hand out settings to you at home to just be able to run because you do need to go through this fine tuning process of turning voltages down, monitoring temperatures. Um, and when you get too far, and you probably will go too far, you'll then need to turn them back up a little bit just to find that sweet spot of the lowest temperature that we can possibly get, but also with the best performance. And if you are running a lower end cooler like that, then that is a, a slightly different uh, way of approaching it. And that's why we need a cutscene. Okay, so with the air cooler, this could be any combination of CPU and cooler. It could even be a 14900K with a 240 millimeter air cooler. But what you might find is you're turning the voltage down and, <coughs> excuse me, you're turning the voltage down and then you, it's gonna become unstable. Uh, but you've not got the temperatures that you wanted. You're still hitting 100 degrees or something. And at that point, you just need to realize that maybe the cooling can't keep up and no undervolting is going to be able to cope with a uh, lower end cooler. So at this point, we need to under clock as well. So when you find that instability, turn your multiplier down a couple of notches. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. It's quite simple. You need to know where it should be and then you come down, let's say one or two. You, uh, and once you have, done that, you can then start undervolting again and push the voltage down again. With uh, the test system, I went from 55, I ended up at 52. I managed to get my temps down to under 100 degrees. I managed to bring the uh, temperatures down, lower the voltages, lower the clock speed, but still, most importantly, the performance went up. So don't be afraid. Like I said, this isn't just for super high-end builds. If you couldn't afford a really good cooler or it's just the one that you've got or your processor might just be a bit warm, you can still fine tune with an underclock as well as an undervolt. But the critical point is by getting it running right, it will be faster. So when it comes to down clocking, if you are really struggling to get your temperatures down on a lower end cooler, with MSI, it's quite simple. So as I've said, you undervolt first, and uh, then if you get to a point where it's still too hot and you're still not happy, you're going to have to start turning the core speed down as well. Now, if you're meant to have 5.7, then you'd move to 5.6, 5.5. Um, with a 14700K, uh, for example, the uh, all-core speed is 5500 megahertz. So we can put this in here. 
peak oil ratio, 55, come on. There we go. You can see it is uh, 5,500 megahertz. Now that is where it would be on a 14, 700 K. Um, but I ended up having to turn mine down. So what you would do is you would turn it down to 5.4 or 5.3, go in, test again. Um, you will find the temperatures will come down a little bit and then you're going to have to turn the uh, volts down a little bit. But effectively, this is just where you do it. Um, and uh, I ended up, it depended on, uh, with the uh, ASUS system, it really depended on uh, what benchmark I was trying to run because I could run it slightly higher with 23. I had to go lower with uh, 24 because it runs a different version of a AVX, but as I, I cannot stress enough, this is only for if your cooler cannot keep up with your processor, and then you have to bring the processor down a little bit to tame it. It's pretty much tuning your processor to uh, work better with the cooler that you have. It's obviously easy, easy to undo as well. You don't have to stay here. If you upgrade your cooler later on, you can undo all of this and go back in and retune it. So if you have a lower end cooler and you're struggling to be able to get your temps down, even though you have undervolted and you're now getting to the point that you're still hot, but you're now uh, unstable, then you are going to need to uh, down clock. And it's pretty easy with the Gigabyte um, uh, BIOS because you just go down to the performance CPU ratio. Now, so that you're aware, 50 means five gigahertz. 45 means 4.5 gigahertz. You can do the maths. So if you have a 14700K and your basic speed is going to be 55, um, put that in manually to start off with you can use the negative key to turn it down if you want or you can just put in the numbers individually as well and it's really going to come down to what you need to do at home but that is the area for you to manually set it okay so i have already said that we did need to turn the uh, clock speeds down as well within the Acer stuff. So we focused on the P cores rather than the E cores because the P cores are where uh, we run into uh, problems mainly and we want to go to sync all cores. Now, uh, what we do is we obviously step them down sort of a, a notch at a time and the maximum frequency is going to be 55. Um, but what we want to do is obviously if we're turning down and the maximum frequency is 55, then our limit will be 54, then it could be 53, then 52. But you obviously work your way down and test in between, as we have said already. Uh, something else with the ASUS boards as well is sometimes we do need to come down to current capability and increase the current capability as well. So by turning the volts down and allowing them to draw more power, it can actually balance out quite nicely. This is something that you do have to manually do with the ASUS boards and tell it it's allowed to. But after you have finished doing your undervolting and everything stable, if you have set yours to 140, then you do want to, just for good practice, come back, turn down to 130, test for stability, turn back to 120, test for stability and so forth. Normally about 120 is okay, but it's like I said, it's just good practice. Also, it's a capability. It's not forcing extra power in. It just means the CPU can accept it or use it um, if it's required. And this can help with uh, definitely when we're running the i9s and so forth. But if you're trying to down tune an i5 or an i7, sometimes this isn't needed. But this is one of the few areas that I would um, uh, debate keeping an eye on as well. But this is if you're running into stabilities, stability problems with like uh, high core loads, uh, this can help uh, you work around it. So however you went about your undervolting, maybe even underclocking, hopefully you saw performance differences. And this is the point where I show you mine because they all made a huge change. And I mean huge change. And it was, it was nice for me to be able to get in there and tweak. Now, this did take a while for me to bring the entire video 
to you, but it's because I was actually working with the vendors to try and make sure we made things as easy as possible because there were some things in the BIOS that were acting up and weren't necessarily correct. So you do need to make sure right from the very get-go you have updated to the latest BIOS. Don't be a fanny about it. Get on, update your BIOS right from the get-go because it's going to put you in a good place. Also, because there are changes with them, so uh, most of them, well, these ones anyway, we made sure these are all right, but you need to make sure you're on the most updated one because you might be on one that's six months out of date and they've been fine-tuning things anyway. But like I said, performance went up, temperatures went down, voltages went down. Long term, uh, they should be fine. But one of the things, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I taught you how to fish, is in a year's time or 18 months time, you might find suddenly, wow, oh, my system's a bit unstable now when I run Cinebench 24 and it's crashing like it was when I was undervolting. And it might mean that you need to just give it a smidge more volts. And over time, the silicon can degrade they can do anyway. This is one of the reasons why the voltages are all so high from the start, but you may need a little bit more volt. You now know where the settings are, you know how to check it, and you also know to keep an eye on your temperatures, you know to keep an eye on your clock speeds, and you can do it yourself. And that's what this guide was meant to be about. Show you where everything is, walk you through the stages, and then let you work it out for yourself at home. Also, you might upgrade your processor in six months and you might want to do this again because you've now run an i9 and you need to uh, go through the whole process again. You're going to know where everything is now. Now, this is a very basic guide because if, I, if I'm honest, I wanted to do each of these videos independently, but because of the way YouTube works, the Asus one will get watched 80% more than the others. So it's good for us to put them all in together and it's a, just a good reference tool where there's one place for us to come to and it is just a basic undervolting guide and an initial setup. Beyond this, if your cooler or your undervolt gets you much lower temperatures running it rated, well, heck, you could turn your clock speed up then if you wanted to and you could go the opposite way and you could start overclocking because this is the basic place. When I used to do a big overclock, I'd bring everything down first before going up because you need to know your baselines. And that's all we've done. We've set the systems up as a baseline and uh, we know where we are. We've got the temperatures as good as, and as competitive as we can be with as low volts. If you then wanted to turn your maximum clock speed from 57 up to 58 and then turn your voltages back up again, you're just doing it in reverse upper clock speed then you go up a little bit with volts that's how you do it but you need to get to this stage first before we can start doing everything else so under volt done temperatures down performance up it's all been a winner i hope i've been able to edit this video because i've had to do it in lots of different sections i hope I've done it in a way that has helped you at home. I know you're gonna to have to skip between and I hope the timestamps have been helpful, but a lot of work did go into this. So I would be very grateful if you could like, subscribe and comment. That we will put threads up on uh, the OC3D forums. They're due for an upgrade soon, but you can also ask me questions on the uh, Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page or the OC3D uh, Facebook page and I'll try and help you as much as possible. But you do have to follow this guide. I cannot give you voltages for your processor. And I'm not being funny. If you want to know the uh, all claw clock speed for your processor, type it into Google. Help yourself first and then I'll fill in with the minor details later. But you now have been taught how to fish. Show me the fish that you can catch at home. I would love to know what temperatures you had, what temperatures you ended up with. I'd love to know how far you got yours at home. I genuinely, I actively would love to know how much this helped you. So please do tell me because it's not gonna make my ego better, but it just, or bigger, can't really get much bigger, but it is going to just, it kind of validates the effort that I had to put in and was it worth all the time? 
So thank you very much for tuning in. I genuinely do hope this has helped you all at home. But for now, at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out. Love you, sis. Ding. Oh, it's okay. And in case you wonder, people wonder why I do this and say hello to my sis. But the first video I ever made on YouTube, she was in it. And this is what she and me used to do when she was a little girl. So that's why the thumbs has always been so very special.